thanks for joining us at Flatirons Online. We're excited that you're here. We are kicking off a women's series this week called Lost in Translation, where we are going to go back、um, to the beginning and look at what God had to say and what He intended for women, and how over time and over the years that has gotten lost in translation. And then we're just going to do our best to apply what He says is right, best, and true for us into our everyday life. So if you have questions or things come up for you that you want to talk through, you can head to our website, flatironschurch.com, or we would love to hear from you on any of our social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Again, we are so excited you're here, and we hope you enjoy. So, women's series. Ah, so you all think this is water? It's modium.、Uh, No, no, no! I'm, 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 I'm really excited.、And、yes, I did pick that song.、Uh, it's country, and I'm a Christian, so duh, that's what you do.、Um, no,、uh, so I've been off the last three weekends. I, I had some vacation, and、uh, and then I,、uh, I went and visited my mom for Mother's Day in Tennessee. And then、uh, last weekend I did a wedding. And whenever I have that much time off, and I know what I'm going to talk about when I get back here, I've got, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about it. So. I came into program last, programming last week, and I said, "Okay, I want to start with、uh, break every chain because I want to start this series as a holy moment. I think it's I think it's that special. All right, so we just need to go back to where all healing comes from, and that's Jesus. And then I said, I want this worship song, and then I want that Miranda Lambert song because here, here's what I want you to hang on to with that 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 country song is, is that,、um, and I think everybody's going to be able to relate to this.、Um, but we go out there in this world and we get lost and forget who we are. And then there's some part of us that thinks to ourselves, 'If I could just get back.'" And touch something in a good time in my life, maybe some healing would start. And I want you to hang on to that today because that's kind of the direction I want to go to, to to introduce this series. And I just want you to know, I'm not. I don't plan on teaching you like a lot of deep stuff or new stuff today. I just want to set up where we're going over the next four or five weeks together in in, in this series. Okay. But before we even get into this, I want to I want to ask the the ladies a question. And, and let me just put a disclaimer on this. Everything I say, I'm going to be speaking directly to women. But just like in the others, in the men series,、uh, men, it applies to you too. All right. So this time, guys, you have. Have to do the math. That's what we ask the ladies to do all the time. So most of you can do math. But so anyway, you can make that application. I don't want to have to say that every time. Men, this applies to you too. But I, I want to, I, I want to ask ladies a question as we get into this. It would be this: What are you like? What are you hoping for in this series? All right, you've got some thoughts or、right, some hopes. All right, what do you hope that you find in this series? What do you hope that you hear in in this series? And and I would assume that it would be something good.、Uh, your answers would be close to something like this. I, I would like to know that. And here come a bunch of really important words. I'd like to know that I have value. As a woman, as a person, right? That I have a purpose. That there's meaning to my life. I, I would like to be assured that I am powerful and I have strength as, as a woman. I want to. And here's、uh, all the conversations I've had over the last several months. This is the, probably the top one. I just like to know that I am enough. I just want to know I'm enough, in spite of my circumstances, in spite of my past, in spite of my present, in spite of my whatever that is.、Um, whether I'm young or old, whether I'm married or single, whether I have kids or don't have kids, don't want to have kids, whatever that is. And we're going to get to all that. I promise. But but here's again my question. And, I, and back at Easter, I asked it in a different way. Remember this? I asked this question: What's your quit line? Remember that? What's that point?、Uh, where, what's that 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 place where you go?、Oh, okay, I'm done. Okay, if you say that or if you don't say that, I'm gonna tap out. I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna go do something else. And so my question would be, ladies: So like you you came in here, and I'm really grateful for that. But you came in here maybe with some conditions, right? What are your conditions going into this this series? And I, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm going to say several times. I, I'm a little nervous. All right.、Um, I've gotten I've gotten more emails in the last four months since I announced we're going to do this from women. And I'm, by me more, I mean hundreds of emails giving me some advice. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. All right. And、uh, and and they go something like this. Like I, I hope you're going to talk about this, or I sure hope you don't talk about this. And I hope you're going to have a woman up there teaching us because you're a man. And you don't understand women. Blah 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 blah. Thanks.、Um, and yes, we are going to have women up here teaching. So, but full disclosure, that brought up a bunch of junk in me. It, it brought up a, a a lot of defensiveness, and that's about me. And I've had to work through that and honestly look at it. But here's where I've kind of landed going into the series today. Is I, I think two things are going on. Hopefully the first one. There's there's two, but hopefully the first one's the main one. The first one is I think I'm hearing so much from women is it, because you're really excited to hear what God is going to say directly to women specifically. 
right? And so that's a good thing to, to, to want, all right? The other thing that's going on is this. Um, there's some fear about what God might say to women specifically, right? But, but go with me on this, all right? If, if God, if we follow the kind of God who actually really does want good for his people, both women and men, it's worth facing scary stuff. It, it's, it's worth going into the, the unknown, even though it's a little scary, because if God is good, it's very, very possible that on the other side of that, something good is, is coming. So I just wanna say this, whether you're excited or scared, I'm really glad you're here, all right? I, so, but my question is, go back to this again. Are, what are you looking for in this series, and then what are the conditions that you bring with you, all right? So, so, so go with me on this. It's a, it's a what if question. And it goes like this. What, what if God wants the same things that you want? Well, I think a lot of times we think that we have to talk God into stuff. But what, what, if, God, what if God's going, I, I want you to know that you have value. He's looking at you going, I know you do. You forgot. I want you to know that you have meaning and power and strength. I already think you are enough. I'd like for you to believe that in spite of your circumstances. But again, just like in the men's series, what if, right, what if God teaches you that the way for you to have those good things in your life, what if it's different than the, the way you thought it was gonna be? And, and here's the thing, all right? Th this is where everybody kinda takes a breath. Because I, I was gonna say, I know what women are thinking, <laughs> but I've been married 35 years, and oh, I'm, I, I get it right about 1% of the time, right? But, um, I don't, know, I don't know what women are thinking. I know what human beings think whenever they hear someone like me stand up there and go, what if it's different? You brace yourself and you go, oh no, you're gonna do it too. You're gonna do what my last church did or you've done, you're gonna do what this person did. You're gonna take the Bible and you're gonna use Bible verses to limit me or restrict my role or my potential or my influence as a woman and you're gonna use God's word to do it. And some of us escape from churches like that where we got beat up and pushed down by the Bible. I'd like to say this, the truth is, I would like to do the opposite. I would actually like to use the Bible to remove as many limit, limitations and restrictions and blockages to you as a woman living in your full potential. You just happen to be a woman, but you're a human being and God wants everything for you. I would like to use the Bible to set you free, I really would. But here's the, the dilemma that comes with that. Whenever we do that, we also remove and eliminate a lot of the excuses and the victim language that we've used in the past to say, it's not my fault, I can't help it. But I think it's worth it. All right, and we're, we have to take an, an honest look. You know, we have to go deep inside. We have to go upstream and see what's really going in, on in our life as a woman, as, as a man. And, and here's the other part of it. Whenever you, you look at what's really going on, the scariest part of this whole thing is this. Then you have to take responsibility for your life. And I don't care what your gender is. That's just, that's just scary. So how are we gonna do that? I remember a few years ago, um, there was something that was kind of de being debated. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because they would hijack the sermon and go, well, what's your stance on that? It doesn't matter. But there was some stuff going on in the political world that was being debated and voted on uh, down in Denver and then eventually in, in, in D.C. in the Supreme Court and everything. And I, I remember that, that, that my son came into my office, Jordan, and, and he had two little boys and he says, hey, Dad, how, how am I gonna teach my kids what has become socially normal and accepted and now is defined as good, but it's very different than our understanding of what God's word says is right and true and good. How am I gonna tell my sons about that without sounding hateful and intolerant? Isn't that a good question? And here's my great answer. <laughs> I don't know. That's how I said, I don't know. Um, followed by this, uh, Jordo, however we're gonna do that, um, it's gonna include things, two things. Uh, first of all, we're gonna do it with love, and it does not include letting go of God's word. Because anytime we let go of God's word, everything falls apart, is what we're gonna find out today. So, so a few, I don't know what you can call them, ground rules going into this series uh, based on the values of what, what drives everything we do around here, like the big rocks. If we let go of these things, then we should just close our doors. But going into the series, here's two things we're gonna hold on to. The first one is called biblical authority. It's one of our main values around here, which goes like this. We believe that God's word shows us a better way to live our lives if, not just we believe it and memorize it, sing songs about it, nod at the pastor, right, right. No, if we're willing to adjust our lives under it, come under its authority and do what it says to do. 
that, that makes a difference in our life, all right? So uh, here's why I say that. If at any time in this series, you're sitting here or in one of our campuses or, or somewhere around the world online, and you think to yourself, oh, well, okay, that's what God says, that's what the Bible says, but I think, stop right there. Because anything that comes after that that's different than what God says is true is by definition wrong. Not because you're a bad person, but because it won't lead to the things that both you and God want you to have and experience. It can't, because it's not true. See, here's what I've, I've been following Jesus now for about 50 years. <laughs> that's a lot of, long time, all right? But here's what I've, under, I, I, I've kind of come to, to learn. You don't have to understand God all the time. You, you don't even have to like what he says. There's stuff in the Bible, I, I look at God and go, I wish you hadn't said that. It would be so much easier to teach if you just left that part out or, or been more and more specific there, right? But whether you agree with him or, or like it or understand God or not, there does come a point where you have to say, do I trust him or not, right? I don't understand some things, but I trust the one and I'll, maybe I'll understand later. So we're gonna hold on to God's word. The, the other one is called spiritual formation and this is what's happening right now. Some people call it you know, growing in your faith. Some people call it discipleship, but it's happening right now. What spiritual formation is, is we wanna know the real Jesus. There's a bunch of bad versions of him. We wanna get to know the real Jesus, and then it's this journey of, and the word Jesus used was repenting, rethinking how we think about everything, because a lot of us are holding on to some ideas and definitions and thoughts that aren't true, and they're actually harmful, but we're getting to know Jesus better, and so we wanna replace our thoughts, ideas, and, and, and definitions with the ideas, thoughts, and definitions that fill the mind of Jesus. I wanna think like Jesus, so I understand like Jesus, so I see you like Jesus sees you, and then you and I interact like, like, like Jesus would want. Does that make sense? It's happening right now. Here's why I say that. If at any time in this series I say, say something, and your response is, well, yeah, that's, that's, be, that's just you. That's because you're a man. You don't understand. That's just Pastor Jim trying to get us to do something. First of all, how about this? That's, that may be a legitimate question you should ask and, and work through, all right? But, but here's a better question. A better question would be this. Is what's being taught different than what God says is true and I don't want it to be true, and so I'm just playing the gender card so I don't have to look at that. So again, this is why I drink, uh, because everybody's staring at me right now. <laughs> this is just water, <laughs> mostly. And so, all right, so, right, so you, you have to look at that. Now, so listen, I'll be honest with you, I'm a very opinionated person, all right, and I think I'm right. <laughs> so do you, you think you're right, and I've listened to you, I know you're wrong, and I, so I, I, I might be wrong too, but, but here's what I'm saying. I will do it my very, very best to make it clear if something's my opinion, and then you can take it or leave it. But the, the most important thing is not what does Jim think or what's flattering stance on this. The question is this, what's God wanna say to you? That's the only reason to come into a place like this, right? What is God going to say to you? And again, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I'm, I'm nervous going into this series. Not because I lack confidence in what I wanna teach over the next you know, three or four, five weeks with some, with some ladies come up here to teach uh, uh, with me. I, I, so, so you know when you lay in bed and you let your, your mind just go crazy? So I have a dream. It's not a nightmare, I have a nightmare. And uh, here, here's my vision of this series, all right? It's like, I feel like I'm walking into a field and there's landmines in it everywhere. And if I step at the wrong one, I've had this dream three times that women are gonna rush the stage with torches and rope and it's not gonna go well. <laughs> I don't think that's true. That's why I do have extra security. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> no, that's about me. That's really about me. So here's what I work through that. Rather than get defensive, because you know, some of those emails, I wanted to fire an email back, lady. You know, I did. And like, who do you think about? Uh, um, but uh, my wife talked me off the cliff and. Uh, Here's what, here's what I have a better idea. I filled up my office with a bunch of women who, who I trust, and I just said, help me understand. And so I'm gonna do my very, very best over the next several weeks to teach you what I believe God says is true about all of us, but specifically what he wants to say to women. And if anything comes up in you, you know, and you don't like, don't just throw it away because you don't like it. A ask this question, all right? This is a filter. Does it agree with what Jesus said was right and true? And the other question is this. Um, if you don't know what's right and true, you, you gotta look at that. If it agrees with what Jesus says is true and your life is different than that, you might wanna rethink it, right? And if it, it doesn't, uh, then if it doesn't agree with what Jesus says, then you should throw it away and go find another church, all right? So here's, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do exactly what we did in the, in the operator's manual series. This is really, really cool. So we started, three weeks ago, we started our, our sixth campus down at Lyman Prison and like, okay, that's great, except we can't launch the women's series. 
it's a thousand dudes, <laughs> right? right? And uh, it, just, it wouldn't be any. So, so we actually, we, we're actually doing the operator manual series uh, down there at, at, at Lyman right, right now. And somebody came up to one of our leaders a couple weeks ago and says, so are you all just here like for the series or do you just come down here for like six weeks? And, and, and the leader looked back and said, no, 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 we're here, we're here for life. He goes, good, so am I. And, uh, <laughs> that's great, that's true. Um, so. <laughs> Anyways, that's anyway, so so we're gonna go back to the beginning. It's like that game of telephone, you know, right, right, where somebody says something in somebody's ear and they say something and they whisper and whisper and whisper, and finally it gets to you, it may or may or not be close. We're gonna go back to the original plan. What God said, here's what I have in mind, and see if over the last several thousand years maybe something got lost in translation, and we're gonna reach in there and take back what is true. That's the goal of this series. So we're in Genesis chapter two. There's free Bibles in the back of all of our campuses. Grab one on the way out if you wanna read more about this. So Genesis chapter two says this. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And so God looks at what he's created and he says, okay, this is, I see something that's not good. It's not good that this man is alone and the solution for God to make something that wasn't good to make it actually good is the solution was I'm gonna make him a helper. Now, now ladies, take a breath. Some of you going, I hate that word helper, all right? All right, breathe, breathe, okay? Um, so, so don't freak out over the word helper because let me tell you what helper doesn't mean. Helper doesn't mean assistant or maid, all right, he runs the garden, she cleans up the, no, 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 no. Here's what, it, it doesn't mean vice president. Who knows what he does, right? Um, so, so, that's just true, all right, but, <laughs> you don't either. Uh, so, come back. Uh, um, here's what helper means, write this down. Helper means helper. Um, that's deep, I studied this, all right? What do you mean? She is gonna help get things done, that's good, that the man could not get done on his own. That's not good. She's gonna help him get stuff done. Right, as a matter of fact, when the woman comes on the scene, the situation doesn't go from not good to good. The situation goes from not good to very good. Skips right over good, okay? So here's the best way that I've found to get on board with the word helper because those are one of those, it's one of those words that's gotten lost in translation. In English, it doesn't sound very flattering, but the most common way that the term helper is used in the Bible refers to God, all right? God is our helper. Well, I don't like that. <laughs> what? He was, he was Israel's helper. God is our helper in time of need. Uh, the book of Psalms says the Lord is our chief helper, our shield and defender of our help. So ladies, men too, but ladies are, listen, um, wouldn't you say that the, that the thing that you go to God for and ask for more than anything else is help? Remember this great prayer? Jesus, help, amen. That's, that's it. So helper means I'm gonna get some stuff done that he's not gonna be able to get done, but together we can get some really very good things done. Does that make sense? All right, now we're gonna back up a chapter. It's all in sequence, but it's written kind of out of order. But here's what comes next uh, as this woman joins the scene. Then God said, let us make man, and that's the mankind form of the Hebrew word there. So let us make people in our image, that's the masculine noun, after our likeness, that's the feminine noun. All right, and let, now this is really, so when I point to you, you say the word, and let, that's, that's important. Some of the guys are going, them. All right, okay, listen, all right. And let them have dominion, rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion, rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over every living thing that moves on the earth. And so I th you, have to, you have to pick up on this. And I try to emphasize it, or emphasize it. God's goal is not for him. His goal is for them, both of them. God's speaking to all of us. God's goal for all people is for, for, to, to, to help them create a, a fruit-bearing, sustainable, orderly system where the world that God has entrusted to them works best, very good. And God sees that one man, one gender, one person trying to run the world alone or in isolation, he goes, that's not good. Or at least it's not as good as it could become. It could actually become very good. And here's my idea, and I'm God, and I'm kinda smart. 
How about this? If another unique helper or contributor partnered up and together in the ruling process, they, they get some stuff done. And God blessed them. And God charged both of them. I'm commanding the two of you, both of you, to, 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 work, to, to work together. Now, at this point, there is no, there's no mention of Later in the Bible, it's gonna fall apart, but at this point, there's no mention of rank. There's no mention of division of labor. He does that and she cleans it. No, no, there's nothing like that. There's no mention of who's in charge. God blessed them. God charged both of them. I'm commanding the two of you to rule together over all of this part of the earth that I've entrusted to you and do it together. It will work well if you'll work together. Now, now that, this is gonna bring up some questions all through this series. The questions that you write in your head go like this. So are you saying, right? And you're already going, so are you saying, all right? So here's the first one. So, Jim, are you saying that if I'm single or single again or I'm not married, I don't wanna be married, whatever, are you saying that I'm not good or I'm not good enough as I am? <laughs> no. I, of course not. As a matter of fact, I go on the opposite extreme I, I go much stronger. Here's what I'm gonna say. I'd say you're not much good for anything until you get some stuff figured out. What do you mean? About who you really are as a person. Who you are you know, to Christ. You're, what, 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 who you are in Christ. I, 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 you don't have much to offer the world until you agree with God with what he says is true about you. And until then, it's never gonna be very good. But once you get some stuff figured out, now see, that's, that's just true whether you're single or married. That's like the most important thing for all of us to figure out, whether you're married or single, young or old, man or woman. But, but having said that, okay, um, you've got, I mean, this, you, you have to, you figure some stuff out with God and that's what makes you very good, right? Having said that, I wanna, I wanna say this, and this is just reality. It, first one is this, except for a few very rare exceptions, and they're not bad exceptions, the, the, the guy named Paul wrote a big chunk of the Bible says, this, this is a really good thing to want to have and he's talking about singleness, all right? But, and some of us are gonna be single our whole life. It's, it's, it's just this thing that, that God goes, and we're very, very good with that. But most of us, at some point in our life, will share life in a partnership called marriage, where we are we're ruling our world and helping one another do things together that wouldn't be as good as if we were alone. So we just have to look at how we're gonna get along, right? Get some things figured out. The second thing would be this, is that whether you are married or single, you know, again, man or woman, the, the whole world works better when you consider and keep in mind, and not just acknowledge it, but actually value it, the help and the contribution of the other gender that comes to the table. Uh, be that in your family, in your marriage, in, in your faith system, in, your, in, the, in the way you, where you go to work, in your business, in your leadership, in, in sports, in, in entertainment. Everything works better. The world goes from not good to very good when we remember that we all come to the table with unique and equally valuable perspectives and contributions that can take something from not good or eh, it's okay to, to very good. See, it's really important. God didn't say to Adam, and this would certainly apply to Eve, God didn't say that they weren't good. He said that living and doing life alone in isolation, not thinking about anybody else, just living your life with tunnel vision, that's not good. So if we, if, we could, if we could value one another, appreciate and, 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 and love one another, and then come together and do things together, he says it can be very good. Now, now how are they gonna do this? How are they gonna live together and rule together? What's the only rule that God throws out there to make sure that this thing is gonna work? And here's the only rule, it goes like this. The Lord God commanded the man, and this included the woman later, so he commanded them, saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for on the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. In other words, he says, Adam, and this applies to Eve, so she, she, she finds this out later, we find out she, she knows this as, as well. As you rule the world, your world, your family, your, your business, what, all the parts, all right? As you rule and have dominion over all what God has entrusted to you, here's my only, my only you know, rule is don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that symbolizes this. Hey, Adam, Eve, us today, don't go to or look to anyone but God and because he's your creator. Don't look to anybody but him as a source for truth about how life works best. He just, just look to me. I made you. 
I knit you together in your mother's womb. I know every thought in your head. I know how this works really, really, really well. I, I, I created this. I know what's gonna happen if, if you do this. It will actually fall apart. And I'm telling you, I just want you to trust me. And if you look to anyone or anything else, the, the end is, is it's gonna die. So here's the only rule. Value each other, love one another, come together in complimentary, uh, serve and work together and fix your eyes on me. That's, and the world would be very good, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? And so, um, so it's the, the, it started great. The Bible was great for two chapters. And then chapter three happens, here we go. So, now the serpent, we know this is Satan, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the, in the garden? So time out, all right? This is note taking time, right? This down, right? The number one way that Satan is gonna get you to question what God says is true is always some form of the same question. It starts the same way. Did God really say? It can go a lot of different ways. You actually believe that stuff? Did God really say, and that's followed by misquoting God, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? Look at God hates trees. I mean, what, what's, what's going on? Why doesn't he want you to have trees? See, I, that's not what God said. How many times have we had some line come at us that, that questions and misquotes God? You go to that church that thinks that God is what? what? I'll give you some examples, all right? Did, did God really say women are like second-class citizens? And the guys are like, uh, I, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, it's in the Bible. Uh, uh, did God really say men are to rule over women? Yes. What, can you have a verse? Uh, uh, no. Uh, did God really say women are never allowed to do that and always must do that and can't do that and always have to do that? Did God really say that? I heard he did. But you know what, here's the thing is, we should expect that from Satan. He's a deceiver. He's crafty. Here's where it really falls apart. Eve's response, right? What do you mean by that? Look at this. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. Got that right. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden. Got that right. And then she goes on a tangent. <laughs> Neither shall you touch it, lest, lest you die. Eve misquotes God. She puts words in God's mouth, adds to what he, what, what he said. He didn't say that. God said, don't eat from that tree. He didn't say anything about touching it. This is what happens when we, when we start piling on extra rules and laws and you ought tos and you shoulds that God didn't ever say. It's like that telephone game again, all right? Things get changed, things get added, things get subtracted, things get lost in translation, and by the time what God said gets to us, who knows what God said, right? Again, how many times have, have, have people, and mostly Christians, put words in God's mouth about, well, this is what God says about men, or about women, or about sexuality, or, or, or drinking, or dealing with people like that, or, or and we, you know, here's what we're really saying most of the time, let's just be honest, I don't know what he said, I'm making stuff up. Or, here's, it gets even worse, uh, he, well, he might not have said it, but he should have. Right? Or, um, well, here's what I think he meant, my interpretation, right? And untrue rules and directions and definitions are piled on people and probably more than anybody else on the planet, it's landed on women, right? If, it, but if God didn't say it, then it's not true. But a lot of us have been chained to it. All that to say this, women, all right, if you don't know what God really said is true about you, it puts you in a really, really bad place to either follow a God and his rules that he probably didn't say, and that's, that can't be a good life, or you get so frustrated because you're smart and you know that doesn't feel, something's wrong with that and you walk away from a God based on what he said that he didn't really say. And either way, it's a lose-lose, right? So here's like... Here's like, get your cameras out. This is the screenshot. I want you to remember, this, this one, screensaver. This is your phone saver. This is, this is just profound. This is what the whole series is based on. It goes like this. This applies to men, but ladies, when you don't know what's really true, according to God, what he says about himself or about you, it is a matter of time to become a victim of a lie. Matter of time. If you, I don't know what's true. Okay, here we go. All right, so, so, so watch this. This is what it looks like. But, but the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, translated, God's a liar. 
he, he's, he's gonna take care of her because he cares about her. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be, what's the next two words? You'll be like God, remember that, knowing good and, and evil. In other words, hey, God has something good, but he didn't want you to have it. What kind of God is that? And now Eve's standing there and she's just confused. She doesn't know what God really said, so she doesn't know what God is really, what, what, what's really true or what's going on here about God or about herself. And so, because she doesn't know what's true, she becomes a victim and she takes the bait. Here's the irony before we move on, all right? Eve was already like God. That was the promise, she'd be like God. She, she was created in his image and likeness already. See, image is not men and likeness is not women. We both have both of those attributes in our life, right? We, we both have image and, and, and likeness in our, she, she, Satan just came back to her and said, hey, what you thought you have, you don't really have, or it's not real, or it's not good enough, and if you really wanna have that missing thing in your life, you're gonna have to let go of God and go to some other tree and, and to, to, to find it. And the woman's doing math in her head. What am I gonna do? Here's what she does. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, I've got something inside of me and I don't feel satisfied. Maybe that will satisfy me and, and that it was a delight to the eyes. That's beautiful. Who doesn't want beautiful things? And that the tree was to be de desired to make one wise. Time out. Who doesn't wanna be wise? Those are all good things to want, right? And here's the other thing. If I'm not wise, that would make me stupid. That would make me foolish, that would make me wrong, it would prove I'm not enough because I have to have that. I mean, again, ladies, how many times have, have people looked at you and went, you, you're stupid if you believe that. All right, I don't wanna be stupid. And so she reached out, she took, she took its fruit and she ate it and she also gave, and we're gonna come back to that word, I underlined it, because come back to that, she also gave some to her husband who was where? with her, I always thought he was someplace else and going, what have you done? No, 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 he was right, he was right there and, and, and then he ate, all right? I always said that the first sin in the Bible is Adam was passive. I think Eve just tied him for first. And here's what I mean, he was passive, she was aggressive. He, take a breath, here's what I mean by that. Um, she's smart, she knew this, for me to have what I don't have, for me to have what I see that's really good and for me to get what I want, um, I have to do something, and, and then not just that, I have to give him something. And the, there's three words, uh, Hebrew words for the word give, and this one translates, she made a deal. She exchanged something, right? And she, she convinced him, she manipulated him, she made a deal with a man. If you want something from me, you gotta do something for me. Now that's a whole other sermon, isn't it? That's a series right there, right? Uh, because, because let's just say, what, what are you talking about, Jim? I'm talking about sexual tension, all right? You got two naked people in a garden. There's stuff going on. That's all I'm saying, all right? And, and the truth is, is that probably nothing else between a man and a woman is used as a weapon. It's meant to be intimacy. Nothing more is used as a weapon and leverage more than sexual tension. If you wanna have sex, you have to do this for me. You better have sex with me or I won't do this for you. And again, that's a whole series. We're not gonna talk about that today. All right, so let's go on. So, so then, I'll get more emails about that than anything, though. Awesome. Uh, then, then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Last time in the Bible we saw the word naked. They were naked and unashamed. They had intimacy. They were one. Now they're just embarrassed. So they did what we always do. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. So, so ladies, here's, here's, going into the series, here are a few things that you have to keep in mind. The first one we've already covered, it goes like this. When, when you don't know what's really true, it's a matter of time until you become a victim of a lie. Let me add to that. Or victimize somebody else. Right? You're just making stuff up as you go, and it may or may not be true, and it's gonna hurt you, and it's gonna hurt everybody around you that's connected to you. See, everything in the world, everything in culture around you, you didn't have to come to church to know this, is gonna say, don't trust God, don't believe what God says is true about you, and don't believe he has a better way. And if you don't know what is really true, it's a matter of time until you take, take the bait. Now, here's, here's the metaphor that, that really, really kind of solidifies everything that, I, that I've said so far. So um, there, there's no mention in the, in the Bible that it was an apple tree, but that's what everybody thinks about. It was a fruit tree, you take a bite, it could have been a pomegranate, but eh, it's, who spells that? Apple, okay? So, so here's, here's, here's the metaphor I want you to remember, and just look around the room, wherever you are, and watch the heads go, mm, yeah, all right? Here, here's how I say it. Eve took a bite of the apple, but the apple bit her. 
Does that feel familiar? Right? You, you went looking for something and it sounded good. You thought it was gonna feel good. It promised something good. You were looking for something good. What were you looking for? I, I was looking for love. Who don't want love? Go for it, go look for it, right? Um, you, you, were, you were looking for security. You were looking to be accepted. You were looking for wisdom. So, so you reached out and you took it and you fought hard and you, and you got it. I don't know what that is for you. Now, let's go through your life. Maybe, maybe this is, if I could just date the right guy, then I would have what I'm missing. Maybe if I can marry the love of my life. Maybe if I could divorce the, 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 the train wreck of, of, of my life. How about this? Maybe, maybe if I sleep with him, then everything will be okay. Maybe if I have kids, maybe if I don't have this baby, if, maybe if I had a better house, maybe if I had a cleaner house, maybe if I was a better mom, if I was a better wife, maybe if we had a, a, a better cars, if I had better clothes, maybe if I got a, a job, maybe if I got a promotion, if I got the position, the salary, the bonus, maybe if I lost 30 pounds, maybe if I was prettier, and you did everything in your power to go, and you're so strong, you went out and you got it, and, and you won. Yeah, you, you got it. And then you had it, and you took a bite out of it, and you remember what immediately followed that? This, this, this big tsunami of, oh, shoot. This didn't do it either, right? Am I, am I close? This didn't work. It, it, it's, it's not true, and I believed a lie. And now, and now you're stuck. And I think some of the language in, the, in those verses nails it. Don't, don't, now you just feel naked and embarrassed and exposed and ashamed and vulnerable and used and you're angry. You got hurt. And now you're living a lot of parts of your life and you think you have people fooled. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. It, 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 I, I've moved on. But sometimes, just like that, that song earlier, you think to yourself, is it possible for me to get back to something I lost. Easier said than done. Sometimes you can't. Hi, my name is Shaylin Seymour, and uh, I've been going to Flatirons for close to 11 years. Grew up in Colorado for the most part. Grew up in a really awesome family uh, that loves Jesus and grew up in the church. When I was 20, um, I had moved out of the house and I had had experience um, and suffered some trauma. And once that happened, um, my faith started really falling apart and I really uh, took a break from God. I started getting in some pretty unhealthy relationships and uh, there was a particular relationship that I was in that was um, that was really unhealthy and emotionally abusive and painful. And uh, when that relationship was coming to an end, I started really trying to pursue um, a relationship back with God. Um, so after that relationship, I started consistently coming to Flatirons and, um, and quickly met um, the man that would later become my husband. I felt like if I really just got married, then everything in my life would be better. Uh, we had known each other for 13 months, and I was married as a wife and a stepmom of two. Things seemed to be looking up. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then I got sick, and um, we didn't know what I had. Um, I was hospitalized and there was about a year and a half worth of tests. A lot of the times it was hard to get out of bed and, um, and uh, so that was a real struggle and it was really hard for our relationship and it wasn't what either of us signed up for. And so I started this crazy hunt of like how do I get better in my sickness, uh, maybe it's spiritual. So I went down every avenue started a really incredible Bible study, and that was one of the scariest things. But I did it, and it changed my heart completely. In that Bible study, I learned that I'm worthy of love, and I really uh, started learning so much more about how God really saw me. In that, uh, life did not get easier. Um, as much as, you know, my husband was going to church with me every weekend, 
uh, his heart wasn't there. So um, that put a lot of stress on our marriage. After Tuesday night rev, Wednesday morning, I could tell that my husband was really upset with me. Um, and when I was driving to work that morning, he called me and told me that our marriage wasn't working and he didn't want to do it anymore. And that my schedule was just too focused around church and it was too focused around God. And I broke and I said, I'll do anything and I'll change my schedule and I'll quit Rev and we don't have to go to church on Sundays. So a few months after this breakdown and us trying to make things work, um, we had a therapy discussion, a therapy session that ended with him saying that um, I was a weird Christian and he didn't know if he wanted to be with me anymore. <laughs> In that moment, I was sad, but I was like, yeah, I guess I am a weird Christian. I would decided that I wasn't gonna hold my identity and my value and my self-worth in a man or in anyone or in anything um, outside of God. Um, and that is the most amazing gift that God's given me. And I won't look back. Uh, my name is Shaylin. And this is what I know to be true about me is that I'm a child of God and that my identity and my self-worth and my self-value is only held in Him and that my life resurrected is a life far better lived um, than I could ever live on my own. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I'm glad she didn't tell us what happened because there's a verse in the Bible where a guy named Paul says he has a thorn stuck in his flesh and if he would have told us what it was, we would have said, oh, it was just about that. All of us have something that looks back and goes, that was the lead domino that changed my whole life, right? And we want it back. So last week we wrapped up this whole Sermon on the Mount series and, and Ben taught probably one of the most famous comparisons or metaphors Jesus ever gave and he said this, a person, a person who takes what I say actually is true and works and puts it into practice, not just believes it, or memorizes, but actually builds their life on what I say actually works. He says, that's wisdom. You're like a wise person who builds their house, their life on a foundation, on a rock, and no matter what the world throws at it, rain, flood, storm, whatever that is, your life will not fall apart. So by definition, wisdom is believing what Jesus says is true about God, about you, about life, about all the parts of life, and then acting like it's true, living like it's true, and making choices that reflect that that belief is actually true. True, wisdom is I'm gonna do what Jesus says is true, right? So by definition, foolish would be everything else. See, here's, here's what Eve did, here's what a lot of us do. She just wanted a shortcut to wisdom. I'm a, I'm a, I think I can get there faster or a different way by letting go of God and doing something different than what Jesus says is true, and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope it stands up, all right? Eve wanted a magic apple. Ladies, there is no magic apple. And there is no shortcut. And the moment that we decide to let go of what Jesus says is true and go to the wrong tree and tell us, tree and tell us who we are and what's the wisest thing to do, some part of our life dies. Probably not immediately, but inevitably. A matter of time. Do you, do you know what, let me land this, right? Do you know what God's response is whenever we do that? Back there in that garden and even today, um, if you keep reading the rest of the story and get, get a Bible and read the rest of the story on your way out, all right, he does the same thing today that he did with Eve. He just comes looking for her. He comes look, walking through the garden, where are you? And he doesn't wanna punish her. He doesn't wanna judge her. He doesn't wanna condemn her. He actually says, I want to remove this thing that's come up between us. I wanna remove uh, your, your, your condemnation. I wanna take away your nakedness and your shame. I wanna, I wanna remove your sin. Now here's what I know about God, all right, by experience. God loves us, and he, he, he probably won't remove all the consequences. Wouldn't that be great? But he will remove all the condemnation and the guilt and, and the shame. And that's what this series is gonna be about. We're gonna ask questions like this over and over. Where have we let go of what God says is true? It's already true about us. We just forgot it and let go of it. Now we're living our lives someplace else. How about this? What lie have we put in God's mouth and then applied it to ourselves or thrown it at other people? 
That applies to both men and women, right? And how is, we're gonna try to connect some dots, how is living out of something that's not true led to some of the hardest, scariest, shameful, insecure parts, decisions, and biggest regrets of your life? How are those things connected? And what would life look like? What would life look like if you begin to live out of what God says is still true about you? And that's what we're gonna look at. I'm done. Made it through week one. Okay, now, here's what we're gonna do, all right? We're gonna sing a song. We're gonna stand, let's stand up at all our campuses, and I'm gonna pray, and then we're gonna sing a song that has the most amazing words. It says like, goes like this. Who the Son sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Right? And that's who you are. And what if you actually got up out of this room, wherever you are, and you actually said, no, I know who I am. And no one's gonna take it away from me again. So God, in this moment, this holy moment that started with you are holy and you can take and break all of our chains and now we land with we are who we, you say we are and in the middle of that, we, 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 some of us have, have to kind of take a look at we don't know who we are or what you say is true but God, we want to know that because if we know what's true, on the other side of that is freedom and identity, the one you meant us to have and so we're gonna go into this series as men and women old and young, married and single, and we're just looking for you. We're going to you, the tree of life, and no one else. So teach us about Jesus, and Jesus will teach us about us. It's in his name I pray, amen.